Every year, there are sad stories about international students who disappear or become victims of crime while studying in another country. In 2001, London attracted students from everywhere for education and new experiences. Among them were Jin Hyo Jung and Song In Hye, two hopeful young women from South Korea. They couldn't have known they'd meet someone they thought they could trust who actually harbored harmful intentions. The case we're talking about today is a tragic one. These two Korean students lost their lives in a foreign land to a man who exploited their trust. This incident is referred to as the Kim Gyusu murders or the killer landlord case. Let's dive right in. This case takes us back to November 2001 in Askham Richard, a little village in North Yorkshire. A passerby noticed an unusual metal suitcase by the roadside. It was quite large and had been there for some time, unclaimed, raising suspicions about its contents. Curiosity got the better of the passerby, who went over to check out the suitcase, only to be hit by this weird smell as soon as he got close. He went ahead and opened it anyway. And what he saw inside was way beyond what he'd bargained for. It wasn't something like drugs or anything illegal he might have guessed. It was far worse, badly decomposed remains of a semi-naked woman. On November 18th, 2001, the police were called to the scene. However, due to heavy rain and poor lighting, they postponed their investigation to avoid contaminating the crime scene. The next morning, they confirmed the presence of a woman's body in the suitcase. The body was taken to the mortuary for examination. The victim's face was wrapped in duct tape with only her eyes visible. The tape was blue with a distinctive design, making it a unique piece of evidence although tracing it without knowing the victim's identity was challenging. The initial examination suggested that the woman was of Asian or possibly Chinese descent and aged between 20 and 25 based on her bone structure. The estimated time of death was around late October and the cause of death was identified as suffocation compounded by blunt trauma to the head. When the identity of the woman in the suitcase remained a mystery despite extensive efforts, a crucial clue came from an unexpected place, the suitcase itself. It had a label indicating it was made in South Korea, which was a significant lead for the investigators. Another breakthrough in the case came when a South Korean police officer who was studying at Leeds University contacted the North Yorkshire police. He had seen an online report about a missing South Korean woman and realized it might be connected to the North Yorkshire appeal regarding an unidentified woman of Asian descent found in a suitcase. The English authorities immediately got in touch with their counterparts in South Korea. Around the same time, South Korean police were investigating the disappearance of a young woman, Jin Hyo Jung, whose age matched the autopsy findings. Jin Hyo Jung, a 21-year-old student studying French literature in France, had informed her family of a short trip to England. However, after leaving for England on October 24th, with plans to return on the 27th, she vanished without a trace. Her worried family reported her missing after failing to hear from her. The family had been in touch with 31-year-old Kim Gyu Su, the landlord of the room she rented for a few days on Eagle Street during Jin Hyo Jung's disappearance, but he feigned ignorance, suggesting she was picked up by an unknown man. Sadly, the police confirmed the identity of the woman in the suitcase as Jin Hyo Jung through fingerprint identification. 
This was devastating news to her family. What was intended to be a brief, relaxing trip turned into a nightmare. The case now pivoted to understanding what exactly happened. How did a seemingly ordinary lodging arrangement escalate to such a horrific outcome? Investigation work by detectives led them to central London, where landlord Kim Gyusu rented accommodation to travelers and students. But as authorities delved deeper, they couldn't locate him and learned he might have fled the country, deepening the mystery and suspicion around him. Further complicating matters, the London police were also searching for Kim Gyusu in connection with another missing girl, Song in a University of Surrey student who had disappeared after a trip to East London. Kim, also her landlord, claimed she went on a trip and never returned. These overlapping mysteries painted a troubling picture of Kyusu, a man whose friendly exterior hid darker truths, now at the center of multiple missing person cases. Two girls had gone missing, one of whom was found dead, and both had a connection to Kim Kyusu. They had stayed at his flat. This connection was too strong to be a coincidence. With Kyusu nowhere to be found, the police searched his Eagle Street flat, where Jin Hyo-jung had reportedly stayed last. The discovery of blood stains on the wall and floor later confirmed to be Jin Hyo-jung's, as well as signs of decomposition in a wardrobe, suggesting this was where her body had been kept before being placed in the suitcase. Questioning Kim Gyusu's ex-girlfriend revealed she was unaware of his whereabouts and had been living alone. Intriguingly, the police found a roll of tape at her place that matched the one used to suffocate Qin Hyo-jung. She claimed to have bought the tape for personal use, but noticed a significant amount missing. Further investigation revealed suspicious bank withdrawals from Jin Hyo-jung's and Song In-hye's accounts after they were reported missing. Tracking these transactions led the police to a travel agent and a car rental shop. Kyusu had rented a car in November, driving over 600 miles, a journey the police believed was for disposing of Jin Hyo-jung's body. Traces of her DNA were found in the car. At the travel agency, they learned Kyusu had booked a flight to Toronto. This led to fears that he might evade capture, but the police still lacked solid evidence for extradition. Fortune favored the investigation when they learned Kyusu was returning to London. The police didn't apprehend him immediately upon his arrival. Instead, they tracked him and eventually caught him in an internet cafe on January 21st, 2002. With Kyusu finally in custody, the police could move forward in piecing together the events leading to the deaths of Jin Hyo-jung and potentially Song in The arrest marked a significant breakthrough in the case that had rapidly evolved from a missing persons inquiry to a hunt for a suspected murderer. Then who is this guy? Kim Gyusu's life is largely a mystery with scant details about his early years in South Korea. What is known is that he left South Korea in September 2000 after a divorce, heading to London to study English. But by October 2001, for reasons unspecified, he quit his studies and turned to renting out properties in London, including two on Eagle Street and a duplex in Poplar, many to Asian travelers and students. To those who knew him as a landlord, Kyusu came across as kind, helpful, and always cheerful. He was seen as charming, especially by the girls who rented from him, and nobody thought he could be involved in anything sinister. However, this persona masked a troubled reality. Kyusu was a pathological liar, projecting an image of wealth while struggling financially, with debts leading to declined credit cards. He was also a substance abuser, as was his much younger girlfriend a stark contrast to the image he presented. 
given Yuzu's background as someone struggling with substantial debt and substance abuse, financial motives for his alleged crimes appear to be a strong possibility. In custody, Kim Gyusu remained uncooperative, offering no information about Jin Yo-jung or Song in -hye. His request for bail was denied by the court, keeping him in custody until his trial, scheduled for the 28th of that month. However, the prosecution faced the challenge of solidifying the connection between Kim and Song in -hye's disappearance. A significant breakthrough came in March 2002, two months after Kim's arrest. A worker at Kim's Poplar property, while renovating the bathroom, discovered a large number of flies and a foul odor emanating from beneath the bathroom floor. Alerting the police led to a thorough investigation. Initially, it seemed there was no space for a body under the floorboards, but the police noticed something unusual about the bathroom wall. Upon removing a sealed part of the wall, they found a small hidden space. Tragically, this concealed chamber held the decomposing body of a woman, concealed under a pile of clothing and with tape around her head, similar to Jin yo This grim discovery was confirmed to be Song in Both women were found naked or semi-naked and had been bound by the wrists with parcel tape. The tape was placed around their noses and faces, Postmortem examinations established that both women had been suffocated. It turned out that he suffocated the students by putting tape over their mouths and noses, making it a slow and awful way to go. Because of this, the crimes also got labeled the sticky tape murders. With such compelling evidence found in his property, the prosecution was now in a position to present a strong case against Kim Gyusu. He was charged with the murders of both Song in and Jin hyo in early April 2002. On May 7th, he appeared in court, where, with the aid of an interpreter, he maintained his innocence regarding the murderers. Surprisingly, he admitted to manslaughter, claiming the deaths of both victims were unintentional and not premeditated. On March 25, 2003, the Old Bailey Court handed down a verdict in the chilling case of Kim Gyusu. He was found guilty of the murders of Song in -hye and Jin hyo and was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 23 years and 10 months. Judge Jeremy Roberts, presiding over the trial, highlighted the particularly brutal nature of Kim's crimes, questioning how he could murder two innocent people who had placed their trust in him in such a cruel and deliberate way. Despite the conviction, the true motive behind the murders remained a mystery. While some theorized financial motives, pointing to Kim withdrawing money from the victim's accounts after their death, others speculated about a more disturbing sexual motive, given the state in which the bodies were found. However, no conclusive evidence of sexual assault was found during the autopsies. The police have entertained the possibility that there could be more victims of Kim Gyusu. Detective Superintendent Peter Shipp mentioned that Kim had traveled a lot through Europe, Asia, and Canada, and there was this worry that he might have committed other crimes elsewhere. Given that he has committed two very similar killings here in a very short period of his life, police could not rule out that he has committed other offenses in other countries. But without tangible evidence, this remains speculation. Song in and Jin hyo young students with promising futures ahead, tragically fell victim to a heinous crime, a betrayal of trust that is deeply unsettling. As Korean students in a foreign land, they must have sought a sense of safety and familiarity with a fellow Korean man who they believed would understand and share their experiences. It's a harsh reminder that sometimes the people we think will protect us the most can end up being the ones we needed protection from.
We extend our deepest condolences to those who knew and loved Song in hae and Jin hyo Jung. May their memories be honored, and may those who mourn them find strength and solace in the community support. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.